Hey guys, how you doing today? It is Steve on the Guru Bro. I need a Windows 8 machine for around the shop here to do some YouTube videos on. And I think I have enough spare scrap parts laying around I could actually make one without buying anything. So hang out with me and I'm going to attempt to make a Windows 8 machine out of scrap parts found in a computer repair shop. Coming up. So hang out for that. Well, I was hoping I could take this case that had a bad motherboard in it that a customer left me for scrap and turn it into a Windows 8 machine. I have a bunch of parts around here in the shop that I plan on using to actually build a Windows 8 machine. So this will be the foundation for it. This is just an old case. Let's open it up and see if it will work. So I might be able to use the power supply that's in it. Well, there is a SATA connector on the power supply, so yes, I might be able to use this. There's a P3 and a, and a six pin plug. I might be able to use the power supply on this and um, I think the motherboard will fit in this hole just fine. I'll show you the motherboard that I have in mind for this. Hang on for just one second. Well this is the motherboard that I plan on putting in this computer, this Windows 8 machine that I'm building from scrap parts. It's an MSI board. This was actually a, a return from an RMI that I sent in and I finally got the board back so it's a pretty recent one the um, CPU I actually took off this board this is a fatality board this is actually a gaming board it used to be a really nice really nice board but it's got quite a few blown chips on it bulging capacitors look at that Bam. So I, I took the um, processor and I'll take the cooling fans off this as well. Look at some of these nice fans back here. These actually light up blue. This gaming board was a limited edition. This is called an AA8XE and it even had a um, processor speed um, status block here for a LED and it also had LEDs there's one there um, if I remember right yeah they're all around here you can see them here and these light up on the case and make like a um, ground effects light which was really a neat card and I kind of hate to throw it away but it's beyond repair I'll probably take this fan and these fans and just throw it away anyway I got the processor off here and it should be just fine and I've already installed it and it's the same socket so that worked out well I just have to find some memory and this is the back plate for this particular motherboard I hope I'm going to check that out Yep, that's the back plate for that, so that'll work out perfectly. So, I'm going to go ahead and um, take out this old motherboard here and take out pretty much all the guts except for I'll leave the power supply and the optical drives in and everything else comes out. And then we'll see if this motherboard fits in there. So, this actual computer, this motherboard that I'm taking out I think ran XP so that gives you an idea of how I'm taking an old XP case and you know gonna turn it into a Windows 8 machine 
see what kind of memory it has in it here. There's only one stick of memory in here. It's a 2 gig. Unfortunately it won't fit on the new motherboard. There's an old video card for the pile. I think I might go ahead and leave this fan here too for now. There's no reason right now that I need to take it out of there. So for now it stays. I just have to remove all these cables to the front end here. And hopefully they're marked. And like this is the audio. You can see where it says it right on there. And all the little reset switches, hard drive LED, power switch. Um, don't know. And a speaker. So we'll make sense of those later. I don't think I'm going to use this cooling block or this fan. Um, that fatality board had a much nicer setup here I pulled it off here I think I'm gonna use this one and again it depends on if it fits I haven't tried it yet but uh, it's a nice Intel cooler and the bearings feel good in it I like the big cooling block on it plus it has the full the, the full harness it should work out fine also I found this um, shroud that goes with it so you know maybe that doesn't go with that I think that's for the back end anyway we're just gonna take what we have around here and hopefully have enough parts to build this computer up completely I don't know if I mentioned why I'm building this computer but um the main reason that I I want to build this Windows 8 machine is for a demonstration machine for YouTube videos actually I'm getting a lot of Windows 8 tutorial questions and I don't have a machine that is set up for the public right now with Windows 8 on it something that I can experiment on and actually you know show videos on so that's what this one's gonna do it's going to be my YouTube Windows 8 guinea pig if you will and I might make it a dual boot system and put 7 on here too and that way I can switch back and forth between 7 and 8 I'm still not sure of the details of that yet we'll see how it works out This is an MSI board that I'm taking out of here as well, so the new SMI should fit in there just fine. Bolt pattern should be perfect. Alright, I'll finish taking these screws out and I'll be back. I think that was the last screw. So there's the old one. And this will go into the precious metal scrap because I tested it and that's the reason why I have it is because um, this, this board is dead. I think it has some bulging capacitors as well. So, no use. Well, there's a good chance I, I won't even have to change this plate out. This is the new motherboard. I'm just going to see how it fits down in here for a second. It looks the same to me. It's not wanting to go in its place, but I think it's because 
I have some things going away. Maybe not. Maybe it's off just a little. There's a way I can tell. I can take the old card and see if the new. This is the old card. I just t took out and see if the plate that fits that board that's in there is, is the same. Yep, it's the same. So this motherboard will fit in this case. I just have to persuade it. I'll be back. Well, I am going to have to change this plate after all, and I'll show you why it still is, as soon as I pull it out of here. There's one thing that's missing on it. Here's the one I have to put in there. So this one here has a parallel port that goes over these two serials. That's the only difference. So I'll just use this plate. It's great, just like that. All right, well, I'm gonna go ahead and pull it back out of there now and try to install this cooling fan. And then we'll put it back in again. While I've got the motherboard out, I figured I would go ahead and clean the dirt that's inside this case with just a wet towel. It's pretty clean for an older case, but it still has a little bit of dirt in there. I'm just cleaning the old thermal compound off the heat sink here. It's pretty vital that you get off all the old dried off stuff before you, you reuse these. Okay, we have some nice shiny copper exposed there. This is where it's going. I just want to make sure that all the connectors are here. I think that's going to fit in there nice, just like that. I just have an alcohol pad on a hemostat. I'm just going to clean the underside of these blades up. Look at that. Just by simply cleaning these blades, you can really get a big performance boost in your cooling. You'll be surprised. I mean, it's true with any fan, even like a household fan. Used to cool your body off. Um, if you clean the blades, you're going to get a lot better performance out of the fan. It's just the way it is. And the smaller the fan is, the more help it needs. And the cleaner you should keep it, just because it is smaller. Cooling is so important on these computers. And it's overlooked. It will reduce noise because it won't be so out of balance and you know a well-balanced fan is a quieter fan and it's also better on the bearings because it won't be wobbling so there are a lot of benefits to keeping your fans clean you can see this one had a lot of dirt on it these are these are the pads with the dirt on there i just got off this fan I've already put the processor in, but I'll take it out real quick and just show you how easily it does drop in there. I have other videos in my library about taking out you know, a processor, and you can look that up if you want. And it only goes in one way because there's notches here. So, what we need is a little bit of silicone based heat sink compound. Just a little bit, you don't need a lot on there. It just fills the gaps so that you're getting good heat transfer. 
you don't want a lot of squeeze out so there's no point in putting more on there than you need that should do it okay now the fun part I'll show you the first one I've got locked in there. You can see where it's contacting here, so I just have to do it to the other three. You just put it in, then turn it clockwise. Time to go back in. The easiest way to mount a power or a, a motherboard into the a PC case is just to keep an eye on the back panel and when all the connectors come out the back end and look like they're seated properly, then you can almost bet the screws are going to go ahead and line up for you. That's how I like to do it. Alright, with that mounted, I guess I can go ahead and start plugging in my wires here. There's the power supply. We'll go ahead and try this power supply and see how it works. We can always change it out later. Here's another connector here. I call this a P4. I think this power supply has one. It should. See. Maybe it's hiding on me. Yeah, it's hiding on me. Here's what they look like here. Most all processors are going to have at least a P4 on them. And they are keyed, so they only go one way. So as you plug in things, you just um, keep moving the wires around and route them so that they're out of the way of the motherboard and all the fans, especially the fan. You don't want anything touching the fan. And this has, um, the top is a rewritable and a CD player and then the bottom's a DVD. I'm going to go ahead and... Um, get a IDE cable and jumper these two down into this. I'll be back. Okay, I found this IDE cable with two connectors on it in my box. So I'm going to daisy chain these two together and I'll just take it off to the motherboard. The red stripe on these, right here, always goes towards the power supply connector. It's an easy way to remember. I should just plug right down on here. Perfect. Need some power. Here's two here I can use. And the red goes towards the red power cable goes towards the red ribbon cable, so that's even easier to remember. Okay, my opticals now have power. here. These have power. And it has a ribbon cable and I'm slave and master on one. 
goes to IDE1 here. Got my power cable hooked up. Got my P4 connection here. Here's that, uh, that fan, that case fan that was in here. I'll try to find a connection for that. That just looks like a red regular fan connection. A lot of times if you look down in here on the connectors, you can find the fan connector. And I see there's one right back here. Might be a little hard to see, but there is one right back in here. So that's where it's going to go. And usually there's a couple. I think there's another one. Um, i seen, I'll show you here in a sec. Yeah, um, there's another one right here by where the fans actually connected in. I don't know if you can see that or not, but so if I decided to put another fan on here later, I could. So just remember, tuck all the wires in nice and neat and work the wires as you go. So it won't be such a mess later. So there's power to that fan. Got that going down into there. Works out pretty good. I need a SATA drive in here, a hard drive. There's my connections for that. And here's a SATA data connector that I can use. So that I can just plug that down onto one of these. Before I do that though, I'm going to go ahead and hook my panel wires up here. I'll be back in a minute. Here is the instruction booklet for our motherboard and you will need this for MSI products because the pins aren't labeled with what goes on them. I know this book is not probably going to focus but uh, this shows you all your pins in the case and what type of wires go to them such as reset and power switches that sort of thing. So make sure you, you can also look this information up online or look in your book. Just to show you what I mean, uh, it might be a little difficult to see this connector, but all those wires coming off here are the reset, power switch, hard drive indicator, that sort of thing. And that's what I was talking about with these pictures in the book, show you how to wire up. And polarity does matter on the LEDs, so make sure you get the red and the black wire in the right spot. Well, I moved the computer project into this room, so... I could have the bench in the other room for another project so I'm going to finish the job here and I just brought the case out like we had left it and the motherboards in there last thing we did was hook up all these wires here and I double checked with the book and made sure that all the status lights and um, power switches, reset switches are all plugged in the proper plug so I'm fairly confident about that. I found an extra SATA connector because I decided that I want to make this um, multiple boot system and I'm going to put uh, two SATA hard drives in here along with the two optical drives that exist. The optical will be shared on an IDE cable, and then the hard drives will be SATA. Here are the SATA drives that I found. Um, not terribly large, but they'll do. This is a Western Digital um, 200 gig. And this is a Western Digital 160 gig. The memory that's used in this computer, here's a stick of it here. This is 1 4 gig of DDR3, uh, 1333 megahertz. And I need to pick up at least one more of these so that this machine has 8 gig in it. And that's also the cap for the motherboard anyway. So if I only have a single stick in, I like to put it closest to the motherboard or to the processor as possible. So that's what we'll do. Okay. I just need to remember to get another stick of RAM. 
I'm going to go ahead and put the hard drives in while I've got the camera positioned like this. The first drive, the main drive with the operating system on it, I'm going to have here. And then the data drive for the all the data will be in a second position. So I'm going to pull these SATA connectors out, out of the way for a minute. I'm going to put the, uh, the 200 Western Digital on the top here. That'll be for the operating system. Go as far as I can this way. I'm going to set that there for a moment. That's where that's going to live. And then the 160 is here. And I'm going to put that right below. You just want to make sure that your holes will line up. And also, it's a good idea to get the screw sizes for these. I keep a bowl of all kinds of computer screws on hand. And I pulled some out already that I thought would fit. And the reason why I chose this small machine screw is because it's not as long as most and when you're going into the hard drive you don't want to damage anything so stay with a, a small screw also um, if it's a, a really old machine or I'm sorry an old um, hard drive um, it may have a fine thread on it so be mindful of that it's always best to match the screws up before you put put the devices in If you have any resistance at all on these screws, do not proceed. Back the screw back out and find out what what's wrong. Because you can be bumping into components or stripping the whole outer. A lot of different things can be happening. So these screws should go in nice and smooth. And also, I just put them on the front side here. You don't have to take the back cover off to put the other side on. I never do that. Okay, last screw in. Now like I said before, you want to make sure that you put these in a particular order. The one that I'm screwing in right now, that will be, become my C drive, or my main drive. And I just want to look down on these connectors here. The SATA connectors. Take a look at them. There's two of them. And the, the way it works, it's labeled on the board. It goes one, two, three, four. Or a B C D so this one the first one here that I've got my hand on this will be C so I want to make sure that I plug it in C there and then the bottom one will become B and just remember on these the clip always goes up like that then I need power this has um, two SATAs on it so I can just put it on like that I'm gonna pull my data wires off for just a minute till I get this one And I was noticing on this um, drive at the top here, this also has a conventional Molex connector, as well as you know the traditional. So you could use this power rail or this one on this particular Western Digital drive. Okay, so I'm just tidying up these wires. Okay, so I've got this all plugged in and I've just tired, tidied up the wires. I pushed in the extra in here. Doesn't look too bad. I've got my memory in. The only thing that I really need to do now, I don't have any video cards or anything to put in this just yet. These two 
ports on the back are open because of the previous motherboard was using them but for now um we're not going to get them we're not going to use them so i dug out my bag of plates that i use to cover up holes that we don't use you can see that's why i like to save this kind of stuff i've got two here that i found that fit it's just a good idea to block up holes that you don't need that way dust and stuff stays out so you know if you're getting rid of an old computer saving little parts like this in a bag he can be used later and then you just have to have a uh, machine screw to put in the case and I'll look through my little assortment here and find two that fit Here's two. So I'm just going to use these little screws right here to hold those in. Now you want to make sure that the bottom of this is pushed outward away from the motherboard. I actually burned up a computer one time because I didn't have the blank such as one of these seated in properly it was on a Dell I remember and um, it was touching part of the motherboard right on the edge of the trace and it actually fried some resistors and actually you know ruined the motherboard so we had to scrap the, the computer itself so just be mindful where the tail of these blanks are going and then it's not touching any part of the motherboard otherwise just don't use them okay well it looks like we've got this thing pretty much wrapped up we've got dual hard drives all SATA we've got our DVD and CD burner hooked up on IDE we're using the slave and master on one IDE cable that's plugged in down here for now we have one stick of RAM that's a 4 gig and we're gonna get one more to make it 8 we've got our processor and our cooling fan hooked up we've got this external fan hooked up to push a bit more air then the connection goes down here and we've sealed all the open holes so this computer is complete now and ready to test yeah you can actually see where this case is um, a Windows XP home edition case <laughs> so now that it will be a Windows 8 machine it's breathed new life hopefully I've noticed that uh, this case doesn't have feet on it, but um, I don't think I have any feet around here. I would need something like this, but it's not real critical. Um, I'll have to look around for some feet later for it. I've got some different ones here, but none of them are the right one. You can see the different kinds of feet. So that's one more thing that I'll put on my um, list to look out for when I'm going through old computers. Try to find some feet for this one. Okay, so I've gone as far as I can with this. There it is. It's in an unassuming sleeper. It's inside an XP case. This will be a high performance Windows 8 machine and once I put some more RAM in there and upgrade the video card it will be even better and you can see that the card the new motherboard that comes out the back using this plate and sealing all these holes looks absolutely stock and you wouldn't be able to tell just from looking at this computer that it was updated in this manner so let's take it over to the bench and hook it up to the monitor and see if we can 
get some bios out of it and then we'll start installing the operating system that's coming up next okay well I brought the computer into this other room here and we're gonna hook it up to this monitor that's sitting over here and see if it fires up for the first time with the new motherboard and all the hard drives and everything you see me hook up inside this case just finishing up the wiring here well here goes nothing it's always a little nerve-wracking the first shot well it is firing up and there's a I hear beeping. I heard the monitor go off here. Let's see what we have here. I'm going to hit F1. Look at that. Bios popped right up. So you can see um, the master and the um, slave IDE those are the two optical drives the CD writer and the DVD optical and then there are the two Western digitals listed as SATA 1 and 2 the top ones a 20 and then the second ones 160 and um, looks great let's see if I can find out um, what it thinks the memory is here. System information. So there it is. It's a a three gigahertz Pentium. Um, it's got the four gig of memory. So this is absolutely right. So all that's left to do now is put the operating system disk in the drive and start to format this as a Windows 8 machine. So I won't bore you with those details. Um, if you want to see a Windows 8 install, let me know in the comments and maybe I'll do a separate video on it. Actually, I might partition this machine out to a um, multi-purpose machine because I'm going to use it for future videos on YouTube. I may just format it with XP, Vista, Windows 7, and 8 all on the same machine. Um, I might um, film that, I'm not really sure yet. If you are interested in seeing how a partition is done and multiple operating systems are put on the same computer, let me know and maybe I'll consider doing one. Okay guys, I hope you got some use out of this. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Bye for now. Hey guys, this is Steve. Thanks for watching. Hey, don't forget to subscribe if you like this video and be sure to rate and comment. See ya.